Hi everybody, my name is Alexandria from The Foreign Fork and I'm cooking one meal from every country in the world. This week is Canada and I have a very special guest with me. This is my Aunt Lori. Um, she is from Canada and she's gonna be teaching us a couple of her favorite recipes from Canada. Say hello. Yes, and, well first of all, I wanna say good morning to Alexandria and um, I was really overjoyed when she approached me and invited me to be on the Foreign Fork with her to create some of our traditional family Canadian recipes. Um, and my feeling is um, food is a way to connect with our heritage. And also these foods bring back nostalgic memories which are wonderful. And so today I'm so excited that I can create a new memory with Alexandria. So, Alexandria, I'm blessed to be here and thank you, dear. You're welcome, I'm so excited. So we're gonna be making, well, you tell us what we're making. This is a um, family tradition, a butter tarts, and butter tarts are the quintessential dessert. It's a sugary pastry. Uh, they're little gems. They've created many a debates <laughs> on to whether or not add raisins or not, add currants, flaky versus crispy. Crust. So we are going to make my family traditional butter tarts today. And when I asked Aunt Lori to give me a list of her favorite Canadian foods so I could pick some things for the menu for Canada, she wrote down on a piece of paper, Canadians are obsessed with, in all caps, yes. butter tarts. So. Yes, it is, a, it is an obsession. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to show you how to do it now. Okay, Aunt Lori, so what is the first step to making the butter tarts? Okay, we're gonna start with the pastry, and the pastry is very tricky. We have a good recipe here from my grandmother, Hog, Perfected. and that's what we're going to use, yes. Perfected over it's many sure. years. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna start with a cup and quarter of flour and a quarter teaspoon of salt, and you're going to whisk that together, Alexandria. Incorporate it real well so we don't get a bite of a tart with lots of salt. It's nice having someone else teach me how to cook. It's, it's fun to listen to you. <laughs> and then what we're going to do, we are going to add a quarter cup of cubed butter, unsalted butter, and a quarter cup of lard. And lard can be bought um, in the grocery store. It either comes in a carton like a pound of butter or a tub like um, sour cream. Okay, now you're going to take your dough cutter. So what I do is I rotate the bowl and I use the side of the bowl to mash the lard and the butter against, okay? And we're gonna, you're gonna do that, dear, until um, we have large lumps with some small lumps. And it's not going to be smooth, it's going to be floury. So my grandma Taylor, um, this is a cookbook that I did. I, I have a recipe for my grandma Hogg and my grandma Taylor. Again, this is grandma Hogg's pastry. And it, it also tells you just how common butter tarts are in the family. That is good, no, that is good, dear. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two tablespoons of ice water and put it in this bowl. In good pastry, it is very critical to use cold ingredients, cold butter, cold lard, and cold ice water. And we're gonna add two, two tablespoons, quarter cup, okay. <laughs> Alexandria, <laughs> of sour cream. And now you're gonna whisk that till it's smooth. Sour cream, is that normal in? pastry in your butter tart pastry? Is that a secret ingredient from your family? That's my Nana Hogg's recipe. My grandma Taylor, um, she gave me this recipe to do in our family book. This is in her handwriting. So that tells you crust is it's difficult, vital. but yeah. she mastered it because uh, <laughs> she had very good crust. I just can't master her recipe. Okay, so now you're gonna add this, the sour cream and the water. And um, you can just stir that with a fork. And again, this product uh, is not like a typical batter. It's going to be lumpy and it's gonna look dry. And that is normal. See that dry flour at the bottom of the bowl? We're just gonna blend that a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me, dear. <laughs> I'm messy too in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm really clean on this show for the most part, but I'm really messy in the kitchen. Okay. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put those gloves on. Let's put 
take the gloves and we're going to form this into a ball. Okay, I think you can pick that ball up now and roll it into a ball. Yeah, get all the little pieces. So what we're gonna do, honey, you see how this just slides out nicely? So go ahead and place that on our saran. And we're gonna wrap it tight and we're going to allow it to rest in the refrigerator for 30 minutes, okay? okay? And again, just like the other ingredients are to be cold, we want our dough to be cold when we roll it. Okay. It helps. We're not this. struggling with it. All right, so we just let our dough rest for 30 minutes in the fridge, and now Aunt Lori's gonna show me what we do next to roll it out. Okay, and I do wanna say one thing. I have brought my grandmother's original rolling pin, <laughs> and since 75 that I can remember she used this, and probably before. Oh my goodness and her egg beater. And we should have used this. Have you seen one of these before? I have one for photography props. Oh, I don't yes. use it to cook, yes. but I just put it in my photography props. So this is her original beater, and it's so nice to have these things in the kitchens when you're, you're cooking, because it, again, it brings back nostalgic memories. So that's it's lovely. Really cute too. Yeah, and it I works well. Okay, so we're gonna unwrap this. And what I'd like you to do, Alexandra, I want you to get messy and have fun okay. and put flour all over the counter. Okay. <laughs> we can make a mess and it doesn't like a, matter. A light dusting or yeah. do I want it to be a good coating? Good coating, honey. We'll get a good base down. And I'm just gonna push a little aside. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and you're gonna take that rolling pin and you're gonna roll it. Now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get it one inch in thick. One eighth, one one eighth, eighth inch. 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 Yes. Okay. And it's not gonna be perfect. As you do it, I'm gonna show you what I do. I actually feel the dough on the counter, yes. Can I? Yep, push into it, honey. And now let's do this as you go, honey, and don't, again, on this, more flour the better so nothing's okay. sticking, okay? okay? And when you start, I again, okay, we have just a really keep, sticky counter yes, and just keep flipping it as long as we can manage it based on the size. We need to get 12 cuttings from this dough. The filling recipe is for 24, but this particular pastry recipe will give us 12 little tarts. Okay, so if we're gonna follow the filling recipe that comes in a second, we'll have to double this. Yes, that is exactly, honey. Would okay. You double it all in one, or would you do two separate packs? I think you're better off doing two separate, because the make chilled, sure. you know how you, the, the coldness is important, okay, so yes. So go ahead, honey, and just start here and plan it so that you can get as maximized as many as you can. So what size cutter is this? This is a four inch cutter. Do you know what to do? Pull the scraps back as we lift it out because if we can't get 12 out of this, which we typically can't, we're gonna fold it up and re-roll it. Okay. So we're gonna take our disc and we are going to just gently place it into our tin. We don't want to press it or we're going to have a difficult time getting the tart out. Okay. So you see that? Yeah, so you go ahead, yes. And those little frills are always nice. They, it shows us it's homemade. Yeah, and you know what to do, honey? Cut one more. I'm going to show you how to put it in so you don't have to press the bottom of it. Okay, so what I do is I start to cup it and I just drop it and see how I grab the edges mm -hmm. and I push it from the top so that I'm not applying pressure to the bottom of that tart. Okay, it's now time to make the filling for our butter tarts. We let our dough rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes, and once it was done, we brought it back out, and now we're gonna make the filling for the butter tarts. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we do? All right, so. Is this our mixing bowl? Yes, it is, dear. So, you're gonna take your two eggs, and guess what? You get to use this. <laughs> Good job, no shells in there. Thank you. It's like I do it all the time or something. Yeah. Ooh, this is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so you want it so you can't see the yolk, the yolk and the um, whites, whites are not are separate. Yes, okay. dear. And then you are going to add one cup of brown sugar and yes. one cup of corn syrup. All right, Alexandria, you're gonna take the quarter cup of melted butter and not too hot because we don't wanna curdle the egg. Okay, and you're gonna take your teaspoon and we want you to put two teaspoons of lemon juice in here. And what this does is this cuts the sweetness. Now, it probably not gonna cut sweetness that much, but it will give us a little bit of sour. And then we're also gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. 
and get, you know what, get the action going. You see how that's nice and smooth? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna make four different types of butter tarts. And so what we need to do is to add our little flavorings in. So our first three, we're gonna make traditional, which okay. is nothing in it, just the filling. Okay. And our next three, we're gonna make just pecan tart. So what I do, I take this and I sprinkle a little bunch of pecan. So you go ahead and do that in these three. And then we are going to make our traditional walnut and raisin, okay? And then what you're gonna do is um, we are going to make pecan chocolate chip. And this is more of a contemporary add, the chocolate chips. Important. You don't wanna get the filling in between the crust and the tin or you're gonna have a hard time releasing it, okay? okay? So I drag the bottom of this across the bottom of the bowl so I'm not dripping. Oh, gotcha. And then I fill it two thirds of the way. So again, just to summarize, to, to make a successful butter tart, keep your lard, your butter, and cold water, ice cold water, everything that goes, those ingredients that go into the um, pastry must be cold. Don't press the pastry into the cup. Try not to get the filling in between um, the pastry and the tin. Okay, so after these are all filled, we have our oven preheated to 325 degrees, and we're gonna put this tray in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so now that these cooked in the oven for about 20 minutes, we took them out and we left them rest on the counter until they were completely cooled. Don't put them in the fridge, but just keep them on the counter to bring them completely to room temperature before you start taking them out. And even before you take them out, you can take a butter knife and just loosen the edges like that so it'll help you bring it up, lift the tart up. Not in pieces whole. Butter tarts are a very sweet treat, so often we eat them uh, with a cup of tea just to kind of cleanse the palate in between each bite. And you know, get to start with that sugar again. And what kind, of, what kind of tea did you pick that pairs well? Well, you know, the Earl Grey, um, the, the um, Dark Breakfast, those are good teas with this. And we get to try them? Yes. Okay. Look how cute this is. You're very cute. I love <laughs> this. You came so prepared. All right, I'm gonna have First. one and you have one? Yes. I want the um, chocolate chip and pecan. I think it's this one, maybe? Yes. Okay, which We're one are you gonna try? try? It might be a surprise. <laughs> I'm gonna try this one. Okay, okay. should we cheers them? Yes. Cheers. And Lori. <laughs> Tastes just like Grandma Taylor's. <laughs> mm. They're so good here. I'll drink my tea again. It's really hot. <laughs> Delicious. Mm -hmm. We need a high five. Nice Thank job. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Mmm. <laughs> Okay, how do we store them now that we have our 12 butter tarts? Okay, to store them. Airtight container, mm -hmm. up two to three days. And if it goes beyond that, you can put them in the fridge for a little bit longer. My grandmother would freeze them. Okay. So she would have a supply in the freezer and take them out half or hour or so before. Okay. And serve them and she probably kept them for a couple months in okay. the freezer. Cool. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited that you got to come here. Um, the recipe for my Aunt Lori's Butter Tarts, they're gonna be on my blog, www.foreignfork.com. And also, we're gonna be doing another video next week with one more of Aunt Lori's mm. favorite Canadian recipes. And we're gonna be having a lot more Canadian recipes on the blog as well. So don't forget to stop by again and check out the other video and head to my blog to read the ingredients. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>